Hello, my schoolers. You are welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, you will be joining me to solve the jam CPT past question for the subject chemistry, the year 2011. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us. Back to my school channel and in this video segment you are joining me to solve question 1 to 25 so let's start with question number one what is the concentration of a solution containing two grams of sodium hydroxide in 100 cm cube of solution okay so um, some may decide to use the relationship between molar mass mass and mole okay remember that molar mass is mass over mole but i'm decided i have decided to use um, this formula for mass concentration okay equals the mass of the solute which is 2 over the volume okay remember the volume here should be in dm cube but we are given the volume in cm cube so recall that 1000 cm cube equals 1 dm cube therefore 100 cm cube equals x so by the time we cross multiply we we'll see that it is 100 times 1 over 1000 right so not 10,000, 1,000. So we'd have 100 year 1, 100 year 10. Okay, that makes 0 0.1 dm cube. So that will be 2 divided by 0 0.1. Okay, that should give us 20 gram per dm cube. Unit for mass gram, then volume dm cube. So recall that molar concentration, molar conch, of course, you can use uh, different formulas, but I'm going to use molar conch equals mass conch, mass concentration, all right, over molar mass. Okay, so the molar mass of sodium hydroxide You can see we have one atom each. So one atom of sodium, which is 23, plus oxygen, that is 16, and hydrogen, 1. 23 plus 16, that gives you 39, plus 1, that is 40. Okay, so the molar mass of sodium is 40, the mass conch is 20, so that is 20 over 40. Right? 2 year 1, 2 year 2. 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 more per dm cube. Is there 0 0.5 or 0 0.50 more per dm cube? So let's move back to the screen and see if we can find this given to us. We can find that in option B. So option B is the correct option. Question 2. Which of the following properties is not peculiar to matter? Okay, let's look at um, property A. Uh, kinetic energy of particles increase from solid to gas okay so you will notice that um the the amount of energy let me just put it that way okay the level of excitement you find in solid particles it's quite lesser compared to what you find in liquid then it's higher or highest when it comes to gaseous particles okay you can see the way they move about it in the world of the container so this is correct random motion of the particles increases from liquid increase from liquid to gas of course you can see that um, the kind of um, compact that you have when it comes to liquid okay it is lesser to what you have in solids okay you see that the particles of solid just um vibrates in that their particular position they don't have that liberty to move around just trying to use layman's language as much as possible so you will see that um there's this um random movement of the particles when you see them as they increase from the liquid state to the gaseous state all right so there's freedom of movement all around then let's see option c orderliness of particles increase from gas to liquid okay so when you talk about orderliness okay talking about um, proper arrangements you know um the way they have been positioned one to another but you realize that this orderliness increases from the gaseous states 
up to the liquid then well refined when it comes to the solid this is of course very correct all right so we have option d random motion of particles increase from gas to solid this is incorrect the random motion of these particles they actually increase from solid to gas okay so the correct option here to the question giving us the exception the not is option d random motion of particles increases from gas to solid based on the layman's explanation i tried to put for so option d is the correct option three from the diagram above an ideal gas can be represented by what okay kinetic theory of matter gas laws okay so this is a very typical presentation that covers ideal gas okay um you can take this as the graph of um, hydrogen and carbon dioxide this tells you about hydrogen and this shows us carbon four oxide and this is the ideal gas okay so you can see the deviations from the regular thing that we have so this is an ideal gas representation so once you are familiar with this topic you will meet this diagram almost in the exact copy so the correct option here is you are looking at n which is found in option b so option b is the correct option number four which of the following questions or statements is correct about the periodic table? Okay, so let's look at the first statement. The non-metallic properties of the elements tend to decrease across each period. This is incorrect, okay? So when you take, for instance, if you take um, group 2 or group 3, um, period 3 or period 2, okay, period 3 uh, begins with sodium, okay? So we have sodium next to magnesium, aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine so you can see that as you move across each period the tendency towards non-metallic uh, property increase okay so not this okay so their tendency towards um, non-metallic property up okay not down so this is incorrect so let's look at um, statement b the valence electrons of the elements increase progressively across the period this is very correct okay so when you take for instance of um, that same period three we have sodium valency of one two eight one magnesium valency of two two eight two aluminium valency of three two eight three you can see so as you move across each period the valence electrons all right, so this statement is correct. This is incorrect. Statement C, elements in the same group have the same number of electron shells. This is incorrect. Elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons. What I mean is in the same number of electrons in their atomous shell. So, look at statement D. This is also incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. Statement D, elements in the same period have the same number of valence electrons. No. This should be a switch okay it should have been written as elements in the same period have the same number of electron shells and elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons so statements c and d mix up so they are incorrect statements a incorrect the only correct statement here is statement b so option b is the correct option question five the relative atomic mass of a natural occurring lithium consisting of 90%, um, this is lithium, okay, the atomic mass and the atomic number, atomic mass and the atomic number, these are isotopes, okay, so we have 10% for this other one, so we have to find the relative atomic mass of this particular naturally occurring lithium, okay, it's just very easy, you just have to bring the percentage of abundance, which is 90 times the atomic mass that is seven okay you had it to the percentage of abundance all right multiplies by the atomic mass six then over hundred okay so 90 times seven that gives us 630 plus this 60 over hundred hundred percent okay so we have 690 over hundred all right, so zero strikes out zero. 69 divided by 10, we have 6.9, roughly seven. So let's see if we have 6.9 or seven given to us in the options provided. Okay, we can find that in option A. So option A is the correct option. Six, an isotope has an atomic number of 15 and a mass number of 31. 
okay so the number of protons it contains is what so don't bother yourself okay just know that um, the proton number is the atomic number so if the atomic number is 15 then the number of protons present is 15 the number of neutrons present is 16 because mass number equals protons plus neutrons number of protons plus number of neutrons so if the mass number is 31 definitely the number of neutrons is 16 and the number of protons is 15 atomic number is the same or is equals to proton number so the correct option here is option b for 15. question 7 the molecular lattice of iodine is held together by what? Okay, so um, we should first note that uh, for molecular solids, okay, their molecules are arranged in regular patterns to give the crystal lattice. Okay, so and uh, we should also note that um, generally the kind of um, force that is available they are weak. Okay, and we are talking about van der Waals forces in this context okay van der Waals forces and dipole dipole we are talking about hydrogen bond okay so generally we know that um the van der Waals force okay this we are pointing to okay is um this can be found or is present okay in molecular solids okay so to be very specific when you talk about uh, naphthalene you talk about um ice you talk about iodine okay what we find there that is holding the molecules together the molecular um, lattice of iodine is held together by option d van der waals forces so option d is the correct option question eight the arrangement of particles in crystal lattices can be studied using what we are talking about x-ray analysis even big organic molecules like proteins we're talking about x-rays okay um metal particles being put together or being seen together in this uh, lattice form you also use x-ray analysis okay um talking about ionic compounds the electron density maps x-ray analysis so in chemistry these are the usefulness of um, x-rays so when it comes to the study of the arrangement of particles in crystal lattices that is x-ray okay big organic molecules like protein x-ray just for repetition so the correct option is option a for x-rays number nine from the diagram above find the amount of solutes deposited when 200 cm cube of the solution is cooled from 55 degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius 55 right here okay so we are looking at somewhat around seven okay let's just take the presentation there and let's look at 40 then 40 should fall close to six all right so um, if you look at the amount of solutes we are looking at that is number of moles that is seven all right at 55 minus six at 47 minus 6 that is 1 so normally we are talking about 200 degrees i'm uh, sorry 200 centimeter cube that's for volume normally you should know that we know that 1000 cm cube should deposit to one mole okay but right now it is being divided by five that is 200 cm cube 200 cm cube is 1000 divided by five so that means the amount of solute two that will be moles one divided by five or you can take it the other way like this 1000 cm cube will deposit one mole therefore 200 cm cube will deposit x when you cross multiply okay what you have is one over five or 200 over 1000 okay that still gives you one over five and when you divide further that gives you 0 0.2 or 0 0.20 so the correct option is option b for 0 0.20 moles question 10 the importance of sodium aluminate 3 in the treatment of water is to do what is to cause coagulation you know when you talk about um, treating water for supply sound supply you are looking at coagulation you are looking at sedimentation you are looking at filtration and disinfection so when you had potash alum or this okay what you want to cause is coagulation they will clump together the dirt will clump together to form flock okay so this is what settles down rapidly then the next thing you do is you have to filter it using a filter bed okay so that the remaining fine particles will be eliminated all right so once that is done what you need to do is you need to kill germs okay you talk about coagulation you talk about sedimentation you talk about filtration and we are talking about disinfection so you kill germs using chlorine all right so you now introduce um 
iodine to prevent goiter and fluorine to prevent tooth decay okay so that is i'm mentioning the chemicals used right now then if you want to neutralize acidity we are looking at um, calcium oxide um, calcium hydroxide okay uh, that's also to remove the hardness of water so what is being introduced to cause coagulation or flocculation is potassium alone or sodium aluminate 3 so the correct option here is option a to cause coagulation do not forget that you can get any of the my school tools so that you can better prepare for your coming exam so all you need to do click on that link is going to take you to the my school website okay right there you can get the my school mobile app for your smartphones okay all the my school software for your laptops and desktops so let's tackle question 11. With what type of bond exists between an element X with atomic number 12? So what element atomic number 12? We are looking at magnesium, okay? Sodium is 11, magnesium is 12, aluminum is 13, okay? So we've identified element X as magnesium with valency of 2. Remember, 2, 8, 2, the configuration, okay? And Y with atomic number 17, this is chlorine, 2, 8, 7, okay? It needs to get one electron for you to obey the rule so we are looking at magnesium and chlorine okay so you know that definitely magnesium will give out two electrons that is why when you see the ion you have mg2 plus and this cl minus okay so that means you need two chlorine atoms for them to be able to get these two electrons that magnesium is ready to donate okay so that will give you mgcl2 so you can see that one is giving out one is receiving that kind of um, bond tells you that you are talking about electrovalent or ionic bond so the correct option here is option a for electrovalent bond please do not forget to hit that like button also click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video content for your learning Hardness of water is mainly due to the presence of limestone, okay, when water dissolves with limestone or gypsum in it, okay, so, um, you know, when water flows over a soil and we, we can tell that uh, gypsum, I'm taking this as gypsum as well, okay, it is sparingly soluble in water, but water that contains um, CO2, carbon dioxide to be precise, okay, will be able to dissolve or make this soluble in it, so the presence of these two Okay, they are responsible for the hardness of water. When you look at calcium hydroxide, you are talking about um, slick lime. Use it to remove temporary hardness. Okay, when we come back to caustic soda, sodium hydroxide, you are talking about removal of permanent hardness of water. So, hardness of water is mainly due to the presence of limestone, CaCO3, or calcium tetrahydrosulfate 6. All right, gypsum. So, the correct option here is option B. Question 13. A suitable solvent for iodine and naphthalene is what? Okay, so we know that um, iodine is parallel soluble in water. Okay, it is soluble in potassium iodide. I'm talking about iodine. Potassium iodide, you are looking at ether, you are looking at ethanol. Talk about tincture of um, iodine. Okay, so and uh, we can tell that to an extent naphthalene is soluble when it comes to alcohol i can point to ethanol so the common solvent that we can use for both of them at least i can agree well is according to the option we find the option b for ethanol 14. which of the following noble gases is commonly found in the atmosphere so we are talking about air and we know that air is a mixture of gases okay we are looking at oxygen as one of its constituents we have um, carbon dioxide we have nitrogen we have rare gases we are talking about argon about 1.2 percent of the atmosphere okay we have um, dust moisture and what have you so going back to the question which of the following noble gases or rare gases is commonly found in the atmosphere all of these listed here they belong to group o you can call them noble gases or rare gases the one found in air one power by 1.2 of the atmosphere is argon so the correct option here is option d for argon question 15 we have um dinitrogen okay tetra oxide all right to give you 
nitrogen dioxide. All right. So this tells you that this is an endothermic reaction. So if you follow the Chatelier's um, principle, what you will notice that an increase in temperature, okay, will cause the equilibrium position to shift to the right, and the equilibrium constant will increase in value. Okay, that will favor the forward reaction. So the correct option here is option A. It will cause an increase. Um, in the value of the equilibrium constant k and the equilibrium position will shift to the right endothermic reaction so the correct option here is option a number 16 in the reaction above we have um, acetate aion is what okay it is a conjugate base to acetic acid all right so if you use the bronsted um lorry proton theory of acid and base okay so you know once an acid you no know, it is based on proton once the acid loses a proton okay it forms a conjugate base so this is a conjugate base to this acid okay then once the base receives a proton okay it forms a conjugate acid all right so the conjugate acid for hydroxide ion here is this water okay the conjugate base to the acetic acid here is acetate aion. So in the reaction above, uh, acetate aion is what is a conjugate base to acetic acid. So option A is the correct option. Question 17. How many cations will be produced from a solution of potassium aluminum tetra ozosulfate 6? Okay, at first this is a double sort, and this is what double sorts do. Okay, they ionize in solution to produce usually two cations, positively charged ions, okay, and one anion, negative charge. So, how many cations will be produced from a solution of this? We are talking about two. That is found in option D. So, option D is the correct option. Question 18. Which of the following is not an alkali? So, when you look at the definition of alkali, we're talking now about basic hydroxide, which is soluble in water. Okay, so if you look through, at first, before we even go into the question, let's add this um, information to it. Uh, ammonia production used in the uh, making or production of detergent. Uh, magnesium hydroxide, we're talking about manufacture of uh, toothpaste. This is for cement. This is for soaps okay so just side information let's go back to the question which of the following is not an alkali so from the definition i've given earlier okay this should be well explained because all of the compounds i have here okay they are all alkalis okay the only thing i can just do is to put them into different um strength of alkali this is a strong alkali okay ionize completely in water why this Okay, I realize this um, slightly in water. Okay, so this is an alkaline gas. Okay, these are weak alkalis, weak, strong alkalis. So they are all alkalis. So just to put it properly, in case you see this presentation somewhere else and the question being um, framed in a different manner, you should know that these are weak alkalis, alkaline gas. Okay. These are weak alkali, and this is a strong alkali. So that is what we should do to this particular question. Question 19. An effect of thermal pollution on water bodies is that this causes a decline in the level of oxygen present. Okay. Um, when you look at certain industries like um, your oil refineries, you talk about your steel mills, your breweries, and what have you. Okay. They use these water bodies okay as as a, as a means of cooling all right water from rivers and the rest they allow it to flow in then once this water cools whatever thing they want to do they introduce this warmed water back into the water bodies and this increases the temperature of that water body and in turn this causes a decline in the level of oxygen and you know once oxygen drops the aquatic animals or aquatic organisms there, animals precisely, they begin to die. Once they die, they begin to decompose. And you're introducing the activities of bacteria as well. Those ones come in to use up the level of oxygen, more aquatic animals die. Okay, so um, that is the chain. So generally, when you look at pollution of water, you're looking at thermal pollution, you're looking at pollution from sewage, refuse, agricultural waste, industrial waste, and what have you. So if you go back to the question given us, an effect of thermal pollution on water bodies is that the level of oxygen reduces. Option D is the correct option. 
20. Which of the following is a deliquescent compound? So when you say a compound is deliquescent, that is when exposed to the atmosphere, it absorbs large amount of water. Okay? So deliquescent, we are looking at calcium chloride, magnesium chloride, ion 3 chloride, and what have you, caustic soda, NaOH. Okay? Um, this is um, sodium triazone nitrate 5. Okay? Hygroscopic in nature. Copper 2 oxide, hygroscopic in nature. Hygroscopic uh, compounds, we are talking about compounds when they are exposed, they absorb. Okay, if they are solid, they just become sticky, they don't turn into a solution. And the liquid they turn into a solution. Okay, so um, this is hygroscopic, hygroscopic. The liquid washing soda. Okay, this is a fluorescent. So the correct option here is option B for calcium chloride. It's possible that you like to ask some questions. All you need to do, use the description below. Once you click on the link there, it's going to take you to the my school website. That is the best spot where you can ask your question, okay? Because right there, our solution providers are going to help you out. So join me as we solve question 21. A chemical reaction which the hydration energy is greater than the latter's energy is referred to as an exothermic reaction okay so you can put this on the reverse side like this it's still the same thing um, a chemical reaction which the lattice energy is less than the hydration energy that's an exothermic reaction then on the opposite side okay a chemical reaction in which the hydration energy is less than the lattice energy is an endothermic reaction so for what we have here this is an exothermic reaction especially when you're talking about dissolution okay of an ionic solid in water so the correct option here is option c for an exothermic reaction we strongly believe that you may have contributions you like to make we are so much interested all you need to do is to use that comment section below kindly indicate the question number and the explanation or contribution you like to add question 22 the function of zinc electrode in a galvanic cell is that it does what? Okay, when you talk about galvanic cell or photoic cell or electrochemical cell, you're talking about a device in which chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. All right, so the zinc electrode function or serves as the negative electrode and it supplies excess electrons, which goes to the copper. All right, so what we are going to put here is you can see this is incorrect serves as the positive electrode no it serves as the negative electrode and it's responsible for the production or supply of electrons so the correct option here is option c production of electrons 23 we have methane plus chlorine gas okay then we have this so the major factor that influences the rate of the reaction is ultraviolet light that is the catalyst that we are looking at okay um, this is a chlorination chlorination reaction of course between methane and chlorine okay so the catalyst here is ultraviolet light okay and that can be found in option d so option d is the correct option number 24 the condition required for corrosion to take place is the presence of what of water and oxygen no Corrosion is the result from the combined action of water and oxygen, though it is accelerated by carbon four oxide and gaseous pollutants like sulfur four oxide. So the accelerators that we are looking at is CO2 and SO2. But corrosion majorly, or we can say basically occurs due to the combined action of water and oxygen. So option D is the correct option. Question 25. The diagram above best illustrates the effect of decrease in concentration. Okay, this is typical for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so you can see that the concentration decreases as the time of the reaction goes on or goes further. So this tells you the diagram above illustrates the effect of decrease in concentration as the react, reaction time proceeds. So the correct option once again is option A for concentration. Right there we've come to the end of this video segment but there are definitely more important contents to come. All you just need to do is to hit that like button. Also do not forget to click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts as soon as we upload the next video content just for you.